briolette bar necklace, you'll need 15 faceted briolettes. These are gemstones in a variety of colors, and they range in size from 5 millimeters to 10 millimeters. You need two bicone crystal beads. These are 3 millimeters. You also need a jump ring and a clasp. We're using a lobster clasp. You'll need 26 gauge wire and two pieces of chain. We're using gold loop chain. Each piece is seven inches long. You also need round nose pliers and wire cutters. The first thing we want to do is arrange our briolettes. And to do that, we're going to start by putting this large one right in the middle. And then for our design, we're just sort of picturing a little bit of a random scheme here, but we do want to break up these larger beads a little bit so they're not right next to each other. And we don't want any of the beads that are exactly the same right next to each other either. So I'm going to put those kind of like that maybe. And then I know I want these little teeny beads way out toward the end. And that's just so the necklace sort of tapers. But I don't want it to be symmetrical on either side. So I'm going to put this one that's a little bit lavender at this end and this one that's a little bit wider on this end. And then I think I'll just fill in, making sure not to put two colors that are the same right next to each other. So there we go. And then I do want to make sure this big, big one is in the middle. So I'm going to count and see how many beads I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. It's amazing. Now I'm going to cut a five inch piece of wire and I'm just going to eyeball that. And I'm going to feed the beads onto the wire. I'm going to start at this end and just feed the beads on. And you want to be very careful when you're feeding beads, these, these gemstone beads onto your wire. These um, drill holes are very, very thin and delicate and you can easily break the top of this um, briolette off. See, the, see how tiny that little top is? So I'm just going to feed the wire right through and slide it down. And I'm going to just hold on to the beads with my thumb to make sure they don't slide off the other end. And if you run across any beads, like for example, this bead doesn't want to, the wire doesn't want to go through there. I'm not going to force it. I have broken the tops off of too many actual gemstone beads trying to get the wire through. So instead of using this on this project, I'm just going to set that one aside and I'll use it on something else and I'll just move on to my next bead. But I do want to make sure it's not green because the next one I have here is green. So I'm going to switch up my design a little bit and grab one of these white ones from this end and just keep sliding on my beads. I'm going to just slide these down and make sure that I'm kind of centered here. And you can see that the one of the joys of using these faceted briolettes is that they naturally flip up and down when they're next to each other because they need to fill in the little spaces between the beads. So it's super fun. Almost done. One more. And then we'll be done creating our center briolette bar. Now we want to attach our wire of our briolette bar to the chain. And to do that, we're going to start by making a wrapped loop at this end, but we're not going to wrap it yet. What that means is we're going to take our round nose pliers and we're going to grab the wire just to the end of that last briolette. So right next to that last briolette, I've got the end of this wire sort of curved up a little bit so that they don't slide off this end, but really it's kind of hard for the briolettes to come off, so they probably won't. So I'm grasping the wire. I'm going to make a 90 degree bend in the wire like that. I'm going to reposition my pliers so that it's holding onto the top part of that little bend that I just made. And now I'm going to wrap the wire all the way around that top jaw of my pliers. I'll reposition my pliers so that that loop is now in the bottom jaw and I'm going to pull the wire around to finish the loop. So you can see we've got a complete loop there, but we're not going to wrap it yet. Before we wrap it, we're going to remove the pliers, grab a piece of chain, and we're going to slide the chain, the link that's at the end of one piece of the chain, 
down into that loop. So you might need to wiggle a little bit to get it to lock in there. And now we can close this loop. So we'll use our round nose pliers again. And this time we're going to grab that loop across or grab the wire across the loop, take the tail and twist it two times around our bar wire, just like that. And then we're going to trim the end using our, our wire cutters. These are actually called flush cutters because they are flush on one side and pointy on the other. We're going to use the flush side against our work and trim. And now we've got one side connected to our chain. So this is important. We want to take all of our briolettes and slide them down toward the end so that there's no room between them. And they're going to go up and down. You can see they're sort of going up and down. This one doesn't want to slide down, so I'm going to just pull it there. There we go. Let gravity help. Slide those down. You don't want to leave any gaps because you want them to sit to sort of rest up and down on the wire. There we go. So I'm just making sure that they're all going up and down. They are, very good. And now we're ready to do what we just did one more time, but on this end of our wire. We're gonna make our partial loop by taking our round nose pliers and we're gonna grab the wire just past that last briolette and we're gonna bend a 90 degree bend in it like that. And we're going to reposition the pliers to the top part of the wire, like that. Pull the wire around to make a complete loop, or a partial loop really. Reposition the pliers to the bottom jaw and pull the wire around to finish making that loop. So you can see we've got our loop there. But before we close our loop, we want to take the other piece of chain and attach it. We're going to pull that down so it's nestled into that little loop. And I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to grab across the loop. And then I'm going to make my two wraps to finish my wrapped loop. It's one and two. Ignore my little bend there, that's fine. And now we're going to use our flush cutters again, our wire cutters with the flush side toward the project and trim. And now we've got the center of our briolette bar connected to our chain. To attach our clasp, we're going to use wire and wrapped loops. Same technique we just did. We're going to cut a three inch piece of wire. I'm just going to eyeball that. And we're going to make a wrapped loop in this wire and connect it to the chain. So we're going to do what we just did before, which is grab the wire, make a 90 degree bend in the wire, rotate the pliers so that they're holding onto the top part of that 90 degree bend, pull the wire around the top jaw to make a partial loop, reposition the pliers to the bottom jaw, and pull the wire around to make a complete loop like that. And now we're going to attach that to the end of our chain and nestle that in there into that little loop. And now we're going to finish this wrap or this loop with two wraps. So we're going to grab the loop across with our round nose pliers and wrap the wire around this neck or the piece of wire two times. And then we'll trim. And we're going to trim using our flush cutters or wire cutters like that. Okay. And now we're adding a bead here because otherwise we would end up with two wrapped loops right next to each other. So this is kind of a little decorative way of finishing the end and making it look a little more finished. And we're going to make another wrapped loop that attaches to our clasp. So we'll do the same thing we just did. 90 degree bend, reposition the pliers, make a partial loop, come around to the bottom jaw, finish the loop, but don't wrap it yet. Then we're going to attach our one side of our clasp, or actually attach our lobster clasp. 
grab on across the loop with our round nose pliers and wrap the loop by wrapping that wire two times around and now we'll trim. So we have one end connected now and we'll do the same thing to the other side only this time we're going to attach a jump ring so that our lobster clasp will connect to the jump ring. So I'm going to cut another piece of wire about three inches long. So we're going to make another wrapped loop here. We're going to make a 90 degree bend in our wire, reposition the pliers, wrap the wire around the top jaw to make a partial loop, finish our loop, and then we're going to attach the other end of our chain. Just like that. Pull that down into our little loop. We're going to grab the loop with our round nose pliers across the loop like that and wrap twice. And trim. And now we'll grab our other bicone and we're going to make our partial loop at this end just like we did at the other side. Slide on our jump ring oops, and wrap twice and then trim. And now we can connect the lobster to the jump ring and you can see our pretty finished end.